according to your word, Father. Father God, we give our tithes and our offerings to further your, your cause, Lord God, to further your kingdom, Father. Now, Father, we stand on your word, Father God, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour upon us such a blessing that we will not have room enough to contain. Lord God, we just call those blessings in even now, Father God, as we step into obedience, Father. I thank you that you're rebuking yes. the devourer from our lives for our sake, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that you're making ways where there seems to be no ways, no matter what is needed. Yes. If there's a healing needed, if there's deliverance, Father God, if there's salvation, if there's money issues, if there's health, whatever it is, Lord, we stand in obedience thanking you, Father God, that you are our source, Lord God. So we look to you tonight, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, Father God, for what you are about to do in each and every one of our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the ushers are going to receive your, your offerings and your tithes, if you're paying by cash or check. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is doing exciting things here in the Citadel. Amen. Yes. You need to get involved. You need to become a part. You need to. You need to. You need to. You need to. There's an explosion happening here. I can just sense it. I can feel it within me. Yes. So all I can say, I can't even put it into words. Yes. But let me tell you, you do not want to miss out. And now we want to go ahead and dismiss our children. You can go ahead and, and follow Mrs. Catalina. God bless you guys. And it is with great pleasure and honor that I get to introduce our speaker tonight, Miss Prophetess Miliana. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, that was wonderful. That was great worship by Nipsey and Bella. Bella left already. Okay. And also, thank you so much, Gloria, for the dance. That was Priscilla and Bella also. That was so beautiful. I know that you're all doing it to honor the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So anyway, I am so blessed, delighted to be here tonight. Uh, John is speaking in California tonight, but I am so blessed. I'm so grateful that I'm able to be here tonight. I just want to say thank you so much. I love you all. You all some of you, have, how many of you your first time? Is that visiting? It's so good to have you all here tonight. Thank you. It must be Denise's friend. It's so good to have you all here tonight, but it's so good to see you all here again tonight. Mauricio, it's good to see you again. Praise God. And not only that, it's so wonderful that the presence of God is here tonight. Amen. Praise God. You know, I pray and I ask the Lord to give me a word to share with you guys tonight. And what I got is, I wanted to talk with you all tonight about this word of loving God. I believe that's why we, God saved us for this one purpose, is to love Him. Amen? I want to read this scripture. It's found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse uh, 5 to 9. I'm going to read it real quickly. Because the thought that I, the, what I wanted to share with you tonight of how important it is for you and I to love God. Because out of our loving God, we will love people. Amen? Amen. So we must love God first. Now listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 to 9 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now listen, this is not a suggestion. This is a, a command. Amen. Amen. This is a command that the Lord, this is the very first commandment. The Lord asks you and I, or tell you and I, that we must love him with all our strength, all our might, with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our strength. Why? Because the Lord knows how we are sometimes. Sometimes we can be so caught up 
in our problem, in our crisis, is drawing all our attention into it, drawing all our mind and our, uh, we are so caught up in it. Or sometimes we can put our job, our ministry, our relationship. Sometimes we can put that before God, but he is a jealous God. He said we must love him with everything that we have, with all our soul, with all our heart, and with all our strength. Amen? And he says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. So it must be in our heart. Amen? Amen. It says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as the symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. You wonder why we have Catalina take the children? Because of what he said, teach the children the word of God. Impress on them. Teach them to love God with everything that they have. Amen? Yeah. Because we know nowadays if we don't teach our young people early enough, when they grow up, they will be sidetracked with so many distractions. It breaks my heart. How many knows what happened in Nashville? couple days ago. Yeah. My gosh, when I saw that, I did not read all the information. I just saw it was happened in a Christian school. I stopped and I oh no, because my granddaughter go to a Christian school in Nashville. But we all know what happened. A young girl, transgender, you know, went and did that. But what I'm trying to say is how important it is for us that we need to teach our children, even in young age, teach them to put God first. Because when we put God first, it instill them into their heart in a young age, I believe, because his word, word says when they grow up, they will never, the word of God will never depart from them. Amen? So, not only that, so we must love God with everything that we have. And not only, not only that, when we love God with everything we have, we can go through crisis. We can face problems. We can face situations. But let me tell you what, when you love God with everything you have, it will not, I mean, it will not affect you. It will not shake you. It will not sidetrack at you when your heart is so consumed with the love of God. Listen to this. I, I, I grab up the, these two verses. Song of Psalms chapter, Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 7 and 8. It says, the watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my cloak. Those watchmen of the walls. Do you know that even in church, things can happen? Right. Even people that you look up to, that you trust, that they might do something that will hurt you. But listen what it says. They even take away my call, take away my ministry. They take away the things that I love to do. They take it away. But listen to what um listen to what verse 8 says. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him that I am faint with love. Now listen to this. When we are so consumed with the love of God, sometimes leaders can do something that it does not feel good. They may take away your ministry. They may beat you up. I'm not talking about physically. But we may go through a situation that does not feel good. But listen to what this woman, she loved God so much. The, uh, Song of Solomon is talking about, uh, this is the Shulamite woman is talking. And she's talking about King Solomon. King Solomon represented Christ. 
The Shulamite woman represented you and I. Amen? And I remember um, there was, I may not, probably I did not share it here, or I may have shared a little bit here about my testimony of what happened when I gave my heart to the Lord. When I gave my heart to the Lord, I grew, I grew up in a little island of Tonga. And I'm, I'm sure you guys heard me share about my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather was the first, very first one again Christian in my family. When he gave his heart to the, to the Lord, there was such uh, anger and bitterness from the leadership. They beat him, I mean, not beat, they persecuted him and they ended up exiling him and my great-grandfather ended up in Fiji and the missionary from England found him and he took him to England, educated him and my great-grandfather then <coughs> translated the Bible into my language. Praise God and I believe that's why I'm standing up here tonight because when you and I pursue God with everything that we have, our bloodline, he had no idea that down the road he had a great-granddaughter We'll pursue God with everything he just like what he did. Amen. So anyway, Amen. and because of that, my family, I, I almost like, just like in a Jewish people, if you know the, the, the description, the Jewish people were so taking advantage or so prideful that they have the law, but yet they did not walk the walk. So what my family did, they are so blessed, I'm not, Yes, they're blessed, but they are so um, thinking, wow, our family, we are the one who translated the Bible. But guess what? They did not walk the walk. They know the Bible here, but not here. So listen, that's why sometimes we can know all the scriptures, but if we don't love him as he commanded us, we can easily sidetrack it with the blessing. We can be caught up on what happened to us, the, the, the mystery, mystery that, that happened to us instead of loving God. So, and because they're so caught up of thinking, wow, we are the one who, our family is the one who translated the Bible. And guess what? I knew the Bible here in my mind, but not here until one night. There was a group of people came and preached the gospel across the street from where I live. I went over there, went forward, accepted, accepted the Lord into my heart. Like, there you are. That was the best night I ever lived when I first experienced the peace, the joy, the love of God that I had never experienced. Been going to church, but had no clue what peace, no clue. What joy is all about. No clue what wisdom is all And the character of God. I had no idea until that night. And because I accepted Christ that night, so I wanted to find out where you guys meet. So I started going over there to their meeting. My parents were so mad, so upset. They tried everything to stop me because they're going to another church in their mind thinking, that's a slap in the face. We are the one that... Translated the Bible. Why don't you stay here? And I start going to this group of people that so on fire with the Lord, so excited about the Lord. But I tell you what, when my parents found out about it, they were so mad, so upset. I remember my dad used to tie me with ropes at night, my two feet like this and my two hands in my back. You know why? Because they found out they're going to be a prayer meeting at 5.30 in the morning at church and Milano will go there. But I tell you what, every time that rope came off, I find my way to church. Praise God! Hallelujah! That's why we tell you what, I'm careless. I mean, if a full house or small or a, or a empty house, I am so consumed with the love of God. So, I kept going to church, and my dad found out that I went to church on a Friday night, and he sent my sister to come and pick me up. I used to work for my oldest brother in one of two grocery store. And I, I got in a car, and I drove, my sister drove me home. When I got home, I saw my dad carrying a machete. And I thought, wow, today I'm going to meet the Lord face to face. <laughs> he woke up to me, grabbed my hand on one hand, 
took me to one of the house, our house in the back. And he took me over there. My mom and my younger sister followed us. And we walked in the house and he walked outside and he came back with two long strips from the truck tire. I'm talking about the outside tire. Mm -hmm. He left the knife outside, praise God. But he brought those two strips inside the house and he stopped beating me. And he beat me and beat me and beat me with all his might because he was so upset that I went to church the night before. But I tell you what, the moment those two strips touched my body, instant, my whole body turned numb. God is my witness. I can hear the beating on my flesh, but I didn't feel nothing. And because I didn't feel nothing, I said, wow, it has to be the Lord. Yes. So I start thanking the Lord. Yes. I start worshiping the Lord. I say, Lord, thank you. I praise you. I worship you. The more my dad beat me, the more I worship God. Because he kept beating me. And because I didn't feel any pain. How can you not worship God when, first of all, you tasted his peace, his joy, for him to protect that my body? That is beyond, beyond than what I expected. So I start praising God. Lord, thank you. This is extra. I've just been born again for about a week. Nobody has to teach me how to worship God. I already tasted his peace. But let alone for him to protect me. Like what I said, the more he beat me, the more I worship God. All of a sudden, I open up my mouth and I say exactly how I say to you, Father, I praise you. I worship you. I thank you, Jesus. My mom and my younger sister, they were watching this whole thing. They start screaming and crying and said, Dad, 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 you need to stop beating her. Look at her. She's not crying and she's not hurting. Therefore, she's mentally ill. <laughs> When you beat somebody and they are not crying, they said, my sister, my uh, younger sister and my um, mom, they said, look at her, she's not crying, she's not hurting, but she's talking to herself, therefore she's mentally ill. When you see somebody beating and not hurting, not crying, but yet she is talking in their mind, I was talking, I had never seen anybody worship the Lord out loud. I grew up in Methodist. We go to church, we sit down, and we sit down, they are not making noise. Never seen anybody clap hands. Never seen anybody worship the Lord out loud. That's the foolish things for them that don't know the Lord. So, and I was in, so my dad Kelly he kept beating me. Finally, he stopped when he saw my skin start swelling up. You know, when something beat your skin, your skin, you start to swell up. And then he stopped beating me. And in my mind, I was thinking, wow, I'm the one who got beaten. They're the one who is crying. What a deal. <laughs> I'm not hurting. So my dad left. He went, um, I told the lady that was cleaning our house to get some hot pad to get on my skin to get the swell down. And I, I was so, they all left. Nobody wants to talk to me. I was saying, wow, praise God. Because in my mind, I was saying, I wonder, there is a service within, there's a service within 30 minutes. I wanted to go to church. So the lady came. I told her, ma'am, I don't worry. I'm totally fine. She left. And guess what? I left too. I went to church. Praise God. Went to church. I remember I walked and sat in a back row. My, um, during the worship, and we were worshiping, and all of a sudden, my dad walked into church. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, how can I go now? I don't know if I'm, I'll ever have this opportunity to sit here and listen to the teaching of God's word. You know, in my mind, I was thinking, wow, my dad can beat me up. I don't feel any pain. But I don't know if I ever have this opportunity to sit here and listen to the teaching of God's word. Let me tell you what, I am so glad, so grateful. This has been my cry, my desire. The very first day I cry out to God, God, I wanted to be in your house. Yes. I wanted to hear the teaching of your word. I don't care if it was three people, a full house show up. I wanted to be there. Let me tell you what. My dad looked at me and he said, Meliana, come here. 
with me now. I'm gonna beat you up again, like what I said. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this opportunity again. So in the, the house was full of people. The church was full, and he, I knew he's not gonna be. He's not gonna do anything. So he left. After a few minutes, I heard, after about 30 minutes, I heard a car pulled in again in the church parking lot. I look out and there was a police car. Two cops and my dad came to church to pick me up because I went to church. And I knew I don't want to bother. I don't want to bother the service. So I got up, I walked out, and the cops told me to get in the car. And I got in the car, they asked me all kinds of questions. And listen, I was 22 years old wow. when all this happened. In the island, it's different. When you are a young lady, not married yet, you, your parents still have control over you. But we also have a law. Our law says when you are 18, you're free to do whatever you want. So my dad, so I, 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 so I got in a car that cops asked me all kind of questions. When they found out, I was over 18. They said, we have to go to court. So we went to court. While we were waiting to go to court, my dad still trying to stop me from going to church. And my dad said, if you continue to go to church, I'm going to cut all your hair. I was thinking, I know when my dad going to do this to me. So my sister again picked me up from work. I got home. My dad told me, go sit down in the living room. He got a scissor and he cut all my hair do the roots. And when my hair fell on my neck, this is what went through my mind. Wow, my hair was cut, not for any bad things that I have done, but because I want to know the Lord. What a privilege! Praise God! Get going to church. Amen. Finally, the court date arrived. We went to court. The first thing the judge asked, take off her head. The moment the judge looked at me, looked down, shook his head, and he said, what did you guys have done to her? You guys have beaten her, even tied her with ropes, cut all her hair. You guys have treated her like an animal. And he explained to them the law, and he said, you guys have no right to stop her from what she's doing. All I found over here, that she went to church. So he wrote up an order, gave it to them, and told them they have no right to stop me from going to church. The next day they came and they said, you need to leave Tonga. Almost like my grandfather. You need, you cannot live there anymore. You need to go to another country. Their thinking is if when I get there, I will stop going to church. They gave me three countries to choose from. They gave me New Zealand, Hawaii, and Australia. Hawaii sound good. <laughs> so I picked Hawaii. As soon as I said Hawaii, they went and got my ticket, my visa, just like that, and off I came. That was in 1982. And I tell you what, the whole time I prayed, God, please send someone to listen, uh, to send someone to witness to my father. He's not going to listen to a word I say. But why did I continue to pursue God during all this these awful things that my parents did to me. Why? Because I have tasted the love of God. I wanted to continue to pray. When you love God with everything that you have, nothing can stop you. Regardless, even a persecution that comes from your family, even a persecution that comes from the church, there is nothing can stop you when you love God with everything that you have. Amen? So that was that was in 1982 that off I came, lived in Hawaii. And this has been, again, like what I said. I used to walk to church three miles one way and walk back home another three miles, another three miles, six miles round trip. Listen how faithful God is. Now I got to fly to church. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. God. And instead of fighting to be at church, now I'm at church three, four, five, six, seven times a week. Amen? That's the faithfulness. That's the goodness of God. Now, 
getting back to the, what the scripture said, the watchmen found me as they made their round in the oh, uh, verse eight. Verse eight says, "Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him I'm faint with love." Now, when you're going through a crisis or situation, when your heart is consumed with God, because this woman she had been beat up. Amen. She had been beat up by the watchmen. If something happened to me, let's let's say if uh, something happened to me that I got an accident or uh, uh, or someone beat me up, and if some people found me, listen. To be honest, first thing I would say, can you call my husband? Get him to come and take me to the hospital. But listen to her respond. He think they just beat her up. I'm sure she's all bruises. I'm sure there's all beat up in her body. But listen to her response. She said, please go and find the one. If you find the one that I love. And for me, that is talking about Jesus. If you find the one I love, tell him that I'm lovesick. In other words, regardless of what you are going through, Regardless of the crisis or the problem that you are going through, our mind, our heart, and our expression should continue to express that I love God more than my crisis. I love God more than my problem. I love God more than what I'm facing. Amen? Amen. So anyway, so um, and so I like what I said. I pray for my dad. Lord, can you send someone to witness to him because he is not going to listen to a word I say. Right after I moved to, to Ma I lived in Maui. My parents moved to Hawaii also, but they lived in Kona. My parents went through a difficult time in their marriage, so my mom came and lived with us. While they were, she was living with us, I got to witness to her every day. Took her to church. Cindy Jacob, I'm not sure if you guys know who she is. She preached a powerful message that morning. My mom went up to the front gave her heart to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then I pray, Lord, then after that, after she got saved, she went back home. Praise Jesus. Went back to Kona. And I, my father and my family got involved in Enmore business. He called me and said, can you and John meet us up in Seattle, Washington? I said, yes, Dad, we're going to fly over there. Wonderful meeting from Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning. Uh, they announced it on Saturday night. It invite everybody to come. They're gonna have a church service because it's a company owned. It's a Christian company. Invited everybody to come to the uh, service on Sunday morning. My dad turned to me and looked at me. He said, "Are you guys coming?" He said, "Yes, Dad. We'll go. We'll come." And I remember we walk in. My dad, my two sister, and their spouse, and an. Uh, nephew, I have a nephew there, all got involved in a business. So I remember we were sitting in a back row. The, the speaker gave a powerful message right after he spoke. He asked, is there anybody here want to give their heart to the Lord? My dad raised up his hand. And he said, if you don't mind, for those of you that raise your hand, we wanted to see if you can come up to the front. We, we wanted to pray for you. My dad got up on his own. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Got up on his own. Start coming down the aisle, and I was shocked. I, why should I shock? I should know how good God is. Because his word says, believe, and you and your entire household will be saved. Amen? So, I uh, I look at John, and I said, what am I supposed to do? He said, let fall him down. I jumped up on my feet, came down, ran down, grabbed my father's arm, a man, and we walked down in the aisle. It felt like a wedding. That husband is waiting here in the front while a father and a daughter is coming down in the aisle so he can present her to the one she loved. As I came down that morning with my dad, there were hundreds of people came down to the to the to the front, but it felt like it just my father. It felt like it just my dad had coming down along with my with my two sisters and their spouses. And this as we come down in the aisle, this is what went through my mind. Jesus, I'm coming down in this aisle with my father so I can present him 
to the one I love, and that is you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I just want to encourage you. That maybe again, when you love God with everything, regardless of what you are facing, you can be beat up by your family, beat up by church family. But when you are consumed with the love of God, that God will heal you. Yes. Let me tell you what. When all my parents did all this to me, there were no anger, no bitterness, no hatred toward my parents. Listen, it is so important for you and I to know the love of God. What if you're trying to witness to your family members? What if you're trying to witness to your friends? What if you're trying to invite them to come to church? But they read, what if they don't read the Bible? But they know. They know that you come to church. They know that you are Christian. They may not read the Bible, but they will read you. Yes. They will read you. That's why it's so important for you and I to have the love of God in our heart. Because when we love God with everything, we will love those that hurt us. Amen. We will be so healed. We will not walk around with offended heart. We will not go walk around with anger and bitterness and hatred. Listen, you, some of us are going through a situation of crisis. I want to encourage you. We need to have the love of God consume your heart. Why? Because some may have offended you. Or maybe you are right now. Some offended you, a loved one, family members, or church members. But I tell you what, when you have the love of God, you'll love them no matter what. They'll desire to have what you have. I don't want to desire someone that has anger or bitterness. I don't want to be around people that carry unforgiveness. I want to be around people that is full with joy, full with forgiveness, full with love, full with uh, uh, love, even love those that those that hurt you. Amen. That's why this woman, that, that's why this woman said, said, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him that I am faint with love. You can see the beating. You can see the hurt that I'm carrying in my heart because of what my loved one had done to me. But I love God more than what had happened to me. Amen? Yeah. Now, the other thing is that when we love God, out of loving God, we will love people. Amen. And um, I want to read this, cup, this one verse because this really spoke to me, especially because we travel. And sometimes we, there are some places we don't want to go because we have so many churches we try to go to. But when you love God with everything that you have, you will not choose where you want to go. You will go where God wants you to go. Amen? Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, it says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out, till he has brought justice through to victory. The reason why I read this verse, because this verse brought the, uh, reminded me something that happened a couple of years ago, like what I said, when you love God, you will go to where he wants you to go. You'll even love those that you feel that they hurt you or they are not valuing you. Amen? I remember this uh, about a couple of years ago that this church, uh, they required us, even before we come and preach for them, we have to go through all testing. We make sure that we have to do a COVID test and make sure we have to wear a mask and do all this before we even preach at their, their church. We have been to this church every year, probably for the last 15 years. And I tell you what, when we got that letter, that email from the secretary, I was so mad. I was so mad. I was thinking, my gosh, 
I can understand if, yes, we need to use wisdom, but I can understand uh, 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 the world doing that, but here is a, a church. You can go and preach without testing COVID. Make sure that you have a negative test before you show up. So I remember with John and I, we were discussing it, and John said, I am not going. We are not going to that church. And I said, why? He said, they they are requiring so much, I, I mean, that we have to um, uh, we have to fly in a day early to do the COVID test and it has, it. if it neg if it's positive, we can preach. But if it's negative, we can preach. But we already flew over there. Fly over there. And not only that, we have to wear masks the whole service. And I remember we were debating and I said, man, I, yeah, maybe we should go. And he said, yeah, we should go because they're giving us all this running, all this run around. And we have so many other places to go. But before we make that decision, the Lord reminded me this verse. The Lord reminded me this verse. Because sometimes when we, we may think that our faith may, may be stronger than some other people. Do you know that God does not concern about how strong, how much faith we have? Yes, he wanted us to have great faith, but he also wanted you and I to make sure that we love each other. We love one another. Just like when the Lord reminded me this verse of Bruce, because I was thinking, man, they don't, in my mind I was thinking, John was saying, man, they don't have faith. Why they require all that? They don't have it to, to trust God that he can heal us. But the Lord reminded us this verse, a Bruce Reed, he will not break. Maybe their faith, maybe we may feel like we have stronger faith. So what? And we may compare. Maybe they have small faith. But God love for them. He, he, he wanted you and I to love even though, even those that we may think that don't have faith like you and I. Amen? Because we can easily reject people. Why? Because we don't, we don't, I mean, they don't think like you, we do, they don't act like we do, and they don't talk like we do, and that is so easy for us to compare people. But God does not want us to do that. He wanted us to continue to love people no matter what. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. The last verse I wanted to read tonight it's found in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 24. It says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with, to be with me where I am and to see my glory. I believe when you and I love God, obey God, and, and obey his commandment to love him with everything we have, out of loving him, we will love people. We will not compare if we have greater faith and they have a smaller faith. No, we're supposed to continue to love them. And when we do that, listen to what, what Jesus prayed. His desire, Father, I want those that you have given me to be with me where I am. Listen, I wanted to be where Jesus is at. <laughs> because when you and I is at where Jesus is at, guess what? He will always be in the right place in the right time. He will direct our steps. He will guide us. We will not fall into temptation when Jesus is with us. Amen? In other words, we will, start, we will think, in other words, we will think like him, we will talk like him, we will, walk, we will walk like him, we will experience, and we will be where Jesus wanted us to be. In other words, we will not be filled with worry, fear, anxieties, but when, when Jesus wanted us to be with to be with where he's at, that means we will fill with his peace, his joy, and his love. And we will fulfill what God has called us to do. Amen? All the ministry that, um, that uh, Veronica have announced, listen, 
I wanted Jesus to be where he's, to wanted us to be where Jesus is at. Because when Jesus is with us, we will be able to accomplish more and do more for the kingdom of God. We will not be tired. We will not be, um, get offended so easy, but we will have the mind of God what to do, what not to do in every given situation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So that's the word that I wanted to share with you tonight. Loving God, loving people. And when we love God and loving people, God's desire for him to be with us. And we will always be in the right place in and in the right time. Amen. Praise God. So no matter whatever we are going through, our heart will continue to desire him. People may see that we go through crisis. People see that our mis what happened to us, the mistreatment, but they can't deny that our love for God overcame all the trouble, all the things that went through. The love, the love that we have for God, it overcame all the hurt, all the offense. Why? Because we love God more than our hurt, more than the trouble that we went through. And I believe that's what God wants us to display in our lives. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was looking for a worship team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Usually, usually after we speak, we let the worship team come up. Now is um. Are you gonna play a song for us? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Let's all stand up together. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted you to think about. Maybe some of us here tonight, maybe that what we are going through or maybe a situation that we are facing, but uh, that may have kind of drowned out, drowned out the, this word that I have shared about tonight, that our, the, our trouble or the crisis or the things that happened to us, it may have overtaken our focus. But I believe that God is saying for us tonight, I wanted you to get your, to love God more than ever before. I believe God is saying for you and I tonight that it's a, the, like the commandment I said, love God with your strength, with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your soul. If you feel like you said, God, I wanted to bring my focus back to loving you, just lift up your hand, just to show him, God, I desire that. Just lift up your hand and say, God, that is my desire. That is my desire. That is my prayer. That tonight I'll bring back all my attention back to loving you. Back to loving your people. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, you see this hand that lifting up tonight to you, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you strengthen us tonight, oh God. You strengthen us tonight, oh God, to love you, oh God, more than anything that we are going through. Father, I pray, oh God, if, if you feel like that is you, just come up to the front. For those of you that raise your hand, just come up to the front. Let's all pray together. Let's just pray together. Ask God for that. Just come up to the front. Let's all pray together. And I'll pray these scripts all, all, all over you guys. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We worship you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you have, you have commanded us here tonight. To love you with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Lord, I pray that tonight, oh God, maybe again, like what I said, maybe some of us, oh God, are going through a situation, oh God, a mistreatment, oh God. Or maybe a situation at work or at home that might distract us. But I pray that tonight, oh God, we will... Focus on loving you, oh God. We will focus on loving you more than ever before, oh God. Lord, I pray that tonight help us, oh God, 
that whatever we are going through, oh God, it will not distract us, oh God. As we come before you tonight, lifting up our hand to you, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you strengthen us, oh God. You strengthen us tonight, Lord. <laughs> Strengthen us tonight, oh God, to love you more than ever before, oh God. Not only that, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you put such a love in our heart, oh God. For those that have hurt us, we will love them. As your word says, oh God, you will know the world, will know them, oh God, by their love for each other and loving you, Lord. And I pray tonight, oh God, help us, oh God. Some of us, oh God, maybe went through a situation, oh God, that is so hurtful it's hard to forgive but i pray oh god that tonight lord you empower us oh god to forgive those that hurt us oh god so we can be able to be a witness to them encourage them oh god to show them your love <clears throat> they may not read the bible but they will read us oh god when they see your love and your peace and your joy when they see us carry you oh god Carry through, you carry your character in our lives, oh God. We will be able to love them in, into your kingdom. And I thank you, Jesus, and I praise you, God. I praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that tonight, oh God. Lord, I pray for my sister tonight, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you touch my sister tonight. Strengthen her, oh God. Anything in her heart, oh God, that hinder her, oh God, from fully loving you, loving even those that hurt, brought hurt into her life, oh God. Lord, she will be able to let go, but you're able to love them into your kingdom. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that sometimes, oh God, we can even let go. That's why I ask you tonight, oh God, only you can do that, oh God. Only you can empower us. And I pray that tonight, oh God, you empower your daughter, oh God. You so consume her heart, oh God. First, with loving you, oh God. We can love others, oh God, if we don't love you first. And I pray, oh God, you consume your daughter, oh God, with so much love for you that she had never known before. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Lord, I pray, oh God, that when your daughter leaves here tonight, she will display your peace. She will display your love. She will display your joy for those that she influences and those that she knows. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. Bless your daughter tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I pray for Priscilla. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful, oh, God. What a beautiful dancer she is, oh, God. Glorifying you in dancing. But I pray that tonight, your daughter, oh, God, will have so much love for you more than ever before, oh, God. She will carry your joy. She will carry your love. She will carry your peace. Lord, I pray, oh, God, let her taste, oh, God, loving you, oh, God. So she can be a carrier of your glory, oh God, into her generation, those that she loves and influence. And I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, the testimony that I shared tonight, oh God, of forgiving even those that hurt me, Lord. Let your daughter carry that love, carry that forgiveness, carry that peace, so that people that she knows will be attracted to what she's carrying, and that is you, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Father, for Alex. Thank you, Alex. Alex, did I say it right? <laughs> Lord, I thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful girl she is, so oh God. Lord, I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, again, that your daughter will not look at her past. She will not look at what happened. She will not look back, oh God, because you have so much for her to carry. I pray, oh God, that tonight, oh God, she will experience the love of the Father, oh God. She will experience the love, your love, oh God. Let her experience, oh God, so much love for you first. 
and love those that don't deserve love. And I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you touch your daughter's heart. You so heal her tonight, oh God. Things that may happen to her, oh God, that it's hard to let go. It's hard to forgive, but I pray that tonight, tonight, oh God, she'll forgive and let go. And I pray, oh God, that you strengthen her, oh God. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you what she went through, oh God. Lord, I pray. The reason why you gave me the privilege to travel all over this country, oh God, because you have helped me to forgive. You have helped me, oh God, to display peace, oh God. But I pray tonight, oh God, your daughter, oh God, everything that she went through, oh God, she put it down at your feet, at the cross, oh God. Why? Because she has so much more to carry. She has so much peace, joy, love to carry wherever you send her to, oh God. And I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that tonight, oh God, sit up there, oh God. When people come in, oh God, they will experience your love, oh God. Lord, that's what I experienced that night when I gave my heart to the Lord. Almost 40 years ago, I experienced your love. And that love that never left me. Father, I pray that you impart such love to each one here tonight, oh God. A love that love for you, Lord. A love that loved those that hurt us, oh God. We will look beyond their weakness. We will look beyond, oh God, the immaturity, oh God. Lord, I pray that tonight, I pray for impartation of love on each one of us here tonight. Father, I pray that I want to walk out here tonight, oh God, without an impartation of your love, Lord. When we have that love, we'll be able to forgive. We'll be able to love, continue to love, oh God, those that hurt us, oh God. We can say that we forgive, oh God, but our actions speak louder. Father, I pray that tonight, oh God, help us, oh God, not only say that we love you and we love people that hurt us, but we will show it in action. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Father, our actions speak louder than our word, oh God. How can we win the world, oh God? How can we bring our family? How can we bring our loved one? How can we bring our friends, oh God? If all they see in us is carrying anger and pride and bitterness. But I pray tonight, every anger, bitterness, and hatred, unforgiveness is break and it broken down tonight. And I replace it, oh God, with your love in our heart tonight. And I thank you, Jesus. And I praise you, God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you bless each one here tonight, oh God. That when we leave here tonight, oh God, we will display your love, oh God. I pray, oh God, that this word, oh God, will not go out unfruitful, oh God. It will bear fruit tonight in our lives, oh God. That's the only way we can live. That's the only way we can win the loss. That's the only way we can bring people into your kingdom. If we love you and we love each other. And I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers and answer our prayer tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody have a prayer 